minute slot, so you should have like 15 minutes for the talk, and I give you a signal some minutes before the end. Can everybody hear me? Works? Okay, perfect. Then, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this very nice conference for giving me the opportunity to present our recent work, especially in front of a real-life audience and not a screen. Um, and I think this talk uh, very nicely maybe continues what we just heard. So it's also about period tripling or higher order period multiplication due to parametric down conversion in circuit QED. And you will probably notice quite a few similarities also to the talk uh, this morning by Fabian Hassler, uh, since this was kind of a follow-up project after that. Um, so because of that, I'm also going to talk about parametrically driven systems and period doubling a little bit first. Um, but I will start from a completely classical perspective. So for period doubling, we have a damped harmonic oscillator that is driven parametrically proportional to the amplitude X of the system at twice the resonance frequency. And then additionally, there's also some small stabilizing potential that only becomes important if the amplitude of the oscillations becomes very large. And as we heard this morning, the system has a stable vacuum state below a certain amplitude in parametric drive where there are no classical oscillations whatsoever. And then at a certain threshold, the system has a pitchfork bifurcation where we get an instable vacuum state and two stable symmetry broken fixed points that correspond to an oscillation with half the driving frequency. And the exact shape and form of those points then depends on the details of the stabilizing potential. What I want to talk about today is what happens if the system is driven at more than twice the resonance frequency, so three times or higher. And mathematically, the biggest difference is that instead of this linear parametric driving term in X, now we have a nonlinear drive. And this has quite a big impact on the qualitative behavior close to the vacuum state, because this means that the parametric drive is no longer able to turn the vacuum state instable. However, if the amplitude of the drive is large enough, then at some point the M unstable fixed points that exist in the system will come closer and closer to the vacuum state, and the value of stability around the vacuum state will become smaller and smaller. And today I want to talk about how quantum fluctuations can then induce a transition to the symmetry broken fixed points. We've already heard that uh, for the period doubling case, the quantum fluctuations kind of wash out the instability transition and we can already see photon emission below the threshold. And uh, here in the case of period multiplication, they're actually necessary to even induce a symmetry breaking transition. And going along with the previous talks, I will show the same circuit again. Uh, so one possible circuit that can implement this in a microwave setup is a DC bias Josephson junction that's in series with the microwave resonator. And then parametric resonance is achieved if a, the voltage is biased in such a way that each tunneling Cooper pair excites M photons in the resonator. And you've probably also seen this before. This is the Hamiltonian of the circuit. But uh, in contrast to my predecessor, I will be talking about the quasi-classical limit of small vacuum fluctuation strength, which, uh, because it's A, usually quite good to achieve in microwave resonators, and uh, B, it's also a nice quasi-classical physics. Um, but first, I want to perform a rotating wave approximation with respect to the driving frequency to EV over M so depending on which resonance we're looking at. And this then gives this Hamiltonian also with the Bessel function that we just uh, talked about in the question session. And uh, in order to just study the transition from the vacuum state, this whole Hamiltonian is actually not necessary. For this, we can just approximate the Bessel function to lowest order and just look at the dynamics very close to uh, zero amplitude. 
so that Hamiltonian looks something like this, which I think is pretty much exactly what we just saw in the previous talk. Uh, I just introduced this epsilon, which is proportional to the Josephson energy and encodes the driving strength. And this very generic Hamiltonian for the symmetry breaking uh, has a, a phase portrait, purely classical, that looks something like this. So in the case, of no detuning between the parametric drive and the resonance frequency. The system has one single fixed point, but this fixed point is somewhat special because it has a completely vanishing stability matrix. Uh, this is the case uh, of period tripling, but basically looks uh, the same for higher orders as well. And this sounds very promising because this kind of means the vacuum state is effectively already pretty much unstable, at least from a classical perspective. However, as soon as there's even a small detuning between the resonance frequency and the parametric drive, this single fixed point splits up into M unstable fixed points that form a valley of stability around the stable vacuum state. And the distance of these fixed points depends on the detuning over the parametric drive. And from this one could, in a very semi-classical picture, say that escape from the vacuum state due to quantum fluctuations is possible if the vacuum fluctuation strength is of the order or larger than this distance of the unstable fixed points from the vacuum state. However, I haven't talked about what happens if we also include dissipation. And dissipation is of course known for stabilizing the vacuum state. So we definitely have to take that into consideration as well. In keeping with the quasi-classical description of the system, we can write down a Langevin equation that encodes the quantum fluctuations by this white noise Gaussian term here. And for this system, if we again look at the classical phase portrait, we see this is now at finite dissipation, but zero detuning, so we can see the effect of the dissipation. It still has M unstable fixed points that surround the stable fixed point at the center. Uh, now the distance of these fixed points will depend both on the detuning and the dissipation. So indeed the dissipation does increase the value of stability around the vacuum state. Uh, but from this one can still say that an escape is possible. Now we just have to take detuning and dissipation into account and go into the limit where they are both small when compared to the parametric driving strength. And to make this a bit more quantitative, we write down the martin sitcher rose action, which you might remember from Fabian's talk this morning, which encodes the exact same physics as the previous Langevin equation. But we basically have done that instead of encoding the quantum noise by this stochastic variable psi, now the quantum noise is encoded by this auxiliary variable alpha q via this last term here. And with this action, we can look at the action that is accumulated when going from the stable vacuum state at the center to one of the M unstable fixed points. And the action, the minimum action that is accumulated then gives us the exponential ooh, escape rate by e to the i times that action. And for the case of period tripling, one can actually do that calculation. And this is the exponential rate that we obtain. Uh, I think quite intuitively, it depends on this distance that I talked about before. So gamma squared plus delta squared over epsilon squared is this distance of the unstable states from the vacuum state. And then we have this noise term here which depends on the vacuum fluctuation strength kappa with this plus one, which is the quantumness of this calculation and the Bose-Einstein occupation. And this additional factor two thirds is just what comes out from the martin sitcher rose calculation. We have also done some numerical simulations of the Langevin equation to compare it with this result. So the first plot here shows the exponential dependence of the escape rate on the fluctuation strength. And then the fitted uh, lines, are then the slope is plotted here on the right and compared with the solid line, which is the result here on the left. And they seem to agree quite well. 
after the system escapes from the state, it will go to one of these symmetry broken fixed points that I talked about in the very beginning that correspond to an oscillation of the parametric driving frequency over M. And in order to look at those states a little bit more, we expand the Hamiltonian from before with the Bessel function uh, up to next leading order to uh, also take the stabilizing effects into account. Uh, they are, of course, different stabilizing potentials, and they can lead to very different uh, multiperiodic states. So often, especially in the case of period tripling, one looks at the Duffing oscillator as a stabilizing potential, which behaves quite a bit differently from this stabilizing potential here that arises due to the Josephson parametric down conversion. So what a system could look like in one of these period uh, tripled states in this case uh, is plotted here. So we have the current as a function over time and the black line corresponds to the original parametric drive. And then all these colored lines correspond to possible phase locked solutions uh, that are phase locked to the parametric drive with different fixed phases and a certain amplitude. And if we look at the, again, classical phase portrait, now including this additional term, then we can see that this system, in this case of Josephson parametric down conversion, has six of these stable symmetry broken states, uh, which is a bit different from the Duffing oscillator, which has three, uh, which is the minimum that you can have because you have a three-fold uh, symmetry in the case of period tripling. And I plotted here the phase diagram for delta equals zero, which, which I will uh, remain at for the last three minutes of this talk, uh, because this is also the best limit in order to achieve this symmetry breaking in the first place. And in this limit, the system is equally likely to end up in any of these six states, because each of the M, or in this case three, unstable fixed points via which this initial symmetry breaking is most likely to occur, is equally connected to always two of those symmetry broken fixed points. So in the end, it's really completely equally likely to end up in any of these points. And what's nice is that in the limit of vanishing dissipation or very small dissipation in relation to the parametric drive, these six symmetry broken fixed points are actually completely equidistant around the vacuum state. And they have an alternating frequency that is proportional to the parametric drive. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the time scale of the dephasing once the system is in one of these symmetry broken states, because one can really only talk about a symmetry breaking transition if that time scale is much lower than the time scale of the initial symmetry breaking. And to do that, we went back to the Martin Sitcher Rose action and again looked at the different tunneling rates from one of these stable symmetry broken points. But in contrast to before, where the vacuum state was equally connected to the three unstable fixed points, and it didn't matter via which one the symmetry breaking occurred because they were all uh, identical. Here now the system has three different unstable fixed points and they all correspond to a slightly different uh, case of dephasing. Uh, what we can see, this is a numerical calculation of the different exponential escape rates via the three different unstable fixed points. And what we see is that at slightly larger dissipation rate, gamma over epsilon, it is most likely that the system escapes via this green point. And the green point actually always just connects these two symmetric fixed points with each other. So this leads first to a dephasing to a threefold symmetric state before it dephases completely via one of the other unstable fixed points. Uh, it's also quite nice, there's a very nice technique based on uh, the Poincaré cross-section method that allows one to calculate this particular limit here where gamma goes to zero and uh, one can actually obtain an analytical result for the tunneling rate in this particular case. It's also quite intuitive that in this particular limit the escape rate via these three unstable fixed points is completely identical because in this limit the system performs many, many oscillations around the fixed point before escaping. So in that way these three points and the rotation trajectories that kind of connect these three points uh, make those points identical. 
And yeah, with this, I would like to conclude with uh, this short note that yes, uh, indeed, the dephasing time is much smaller than the time of the initial symmetry breaking if dissipation and detuning are small enough. And thus, one can actually talk about this period tripling as an actual symmetry breaking transition. And yeah, with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, there's already a question in the back. Uh, can you please go back to the expression for the escape rate? For what for? Escape rate. Uh, I think it was... Will you pass it? It, 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 it was... Uh, uh, this one. No, no, escape rate, yes. And then you have yeah. R equals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's valid at zero temperature. Yes. As long as the, we are in the regime where the vacuum fluctuations are small, then of course you just have this, this quantum factor one there, but uh, then this is valid, yes because we have these quantum fluctuations that cause the escape from the vacuum state. We don't need thermal fluctuations for that. Okay, thanks. So um, maybe a follow-up question yeah. to that. So if we were trying to make the, the description more quantum and, and we were, for example, chirping the frequency to go through the delta equals zero at a particular M, mm -hmm. would it be possible to make uh, uh, some sort of cat state or voodoo state uh, by splitting the the trapped state into all these into modes? different so so basically like a, like a yeah superposition yeah. again you're, you're competing with the dephasing and then the question is 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 it feasible? I mean of course I've only looked at this semi classical regime so there are no quantum superposition is really possible. It's more of a um, statistical mixed state then that the dephasing causes. So um, I think in order to really look at that, one has to take more quantum effects into account. I think it could be possible, um, but I haven't looked at that in more detail. Thank you. Hi, uh, maybe just a very quick follow-up on, on that question. Isn't isn't this what um, has been done in the group of uh, Michel Devore, where they looked at the two photon pumping, where where you split these vacuum fluctuations in into two, <laughs> and um, and then if you measure fast enough, you see that there is coherence actually. Yeah, I think for for two it has been done. I'm not 100% sure if it also then works for three or four. Um, because there is quite a bit of qualitative sure. difference between sure. the different cases, but yes, of course, uh, in this way, uh, it sounds possible, yes. Yeah. I think so. Another question? Okay, here. Yeah. Uh, yes, sorry if it's a silly question. I I if I were to measure the stability diagram, I just need to, to sample the output field many, many times, construct some histograms, and I should see three blobs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or six blobs. Or whatever, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. All right. So last question. And maybe the next speaker can already start to connect. My question is about, I mean, to, to calculate this R, you use a settle point approximation, I guess, yeah? So yeah, it's really just Exactly. This, this my my actually, question yes. is, what are the corrections to these subtle point approximations? To this, uh, I mean, you, you're saying this R is, uh, is is valid up to temperature zero, and then my and question is... And it's, of course, only the exponential rate, so there are three sure. factors that I can't calculate, that I haven't looked at. Okay. <laughs> okay, then, thank you again for the talk. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>